So um, it's the, the event is going to be a bit delayed. Um, so we'll have a little bit more time to, to chat. Okay. So um, good afternoon to dear guests, my esteemed fellow designers, fashion enthusiasts, creative friends, and viewers. My name is Farhana Pura. I have been in love with fashion and culture for the longest time. I am currently leading the Fashion Designers Alliance here in Brunei, and I also own a fashion label called Naforer. It is my humble pleasure to be your moderator for this afternoon's event. Welcome to the Budaya Virtual Fashion Film Showcase and Dialogue, where we believe that together as one, we'll move forward collectively to form for the betterment of the fashion industry during these challenging times. Budayao is a grand cultural exchange of the Bimiyaga region, as well as a celebration of its cultural diversity. And today's virtual fashion event will surely demonstrate just that. We recognize the diversity and the unique cultural style that is rich and cannot be ignored or marginalized. This will be our first live virtual fashion event, which is completely conducted on a digital platform in line with the social distancing norms due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We have an exciting panel of speakers and designers from the Bim Iaga region here today to share the knowledge and vast experience within their own fashion industry. But first, ladies and gentlemen, let's enjoy an experience, an infusion of modernity and cultural fashion that is put together to showcase our esteemed Bim Iaga designers. If we can start playing the fashion film right now. Sorry, I think there is no audio on this one. Okay, let's play that one more time. Salam Indonesia, Malaysia, Filipina Brunei Darussalam, Indonesia, Malaysia, Filipina Brunei Darussalam, Indonesia, Malaysia, Filipina
Davao designers have truly made it their mission to show the intricacy and creativity inspired by our 11 tribes. From the apparel to accessories, the artistry of the Davao Wenyo shines through. From where Davao artists leap beyond fame and recognition, we count local design and creativity game changers of the creative economy. Many thanks to the people who pursued the idea. Hubby remains to inspire artisans to come out and show the world just how beautiful our culture is. Well, that was quite inspiring designers. Um, we actually watched all of your videos uh, prior to um, putting them all together. And uh, we, we felt um, the culture um, that, that you were trying to portray, um, as well as uh, the designs are just amazing. So well done to you designers. Thank you. Okay, um, so without further ado, I will be uh, we're moving on to the uh, virtual dialogue now. Um, so I'll be introducing the designers. Um, we'll start off with uh, Mr. Fadzil from Brunei. Uh, so Fadzil Hadin has um, achieved international recognition in the fashion industry after having won two notable international awards in Italy. One in um, 2018, which is the Modest Fashion Award by the Islamic Fashion and Design Council in Torino, and another in 2019, Best Rising Talent by Rina Sante in Milan. His work is also featured in FNL Network for International Digital Fashion Week in 2020. Shantik Brunei is currently based in, uh, in Dubai with an East meets Middle East aesthetic, bringing the best of both culture. So say hi, Fadil. Fadil? Oh, Fadzil's a little bit stuck right now. Fadzil, say hi. <laughs> um, I think your your um, mic is on mute at the moment. There you go. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Sorry about that, the connection is on and off, so I can see visually like a few seconds pause here and there, so yeah. Oh, okay. But I'll go now, hopefully it just goes smooth from now on. Um, so, how are you? How are you doing? I'm good, alhamdulillah, yourself? And I hope everybody's well. okay as well. I think everybody's okay, everybody's doing quite well. You're, you're currently in Dubai, right? Yes, I am, yeah. Okay, nice. Um, so I will move on to uh, Miss Emmy from Indonesia. Uh, Emmy Thi is an Indonesian brand that introduces contemporary ethnic concepts in its own way. The brand is active in campaigning about sustainable fashion through its collections. The designer users uses zero waste pattern, textiles from local artisans, reused production waste for accessories or home decoration, and recently recycling used textiles. Well done, Amy, uh, for being a sustainable fashion designer. Hello. Good afternoon, Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. How are you doing, Amy? Good. Thank Which you. part of Indonesia are you currently in right now? Uh, I'm in South Jakarta. Ah, okay. So, so hi everyone in South Jakarta. Hello. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the next designer from Philippines. Emmy Inglis is the corporate secretary of the Davao Fashion and Design Council Foundation, as well as the designer of Emmy Alexander Inglis Lux Couture. Emmy is not just your average designer. His love for diversity and culture is what makes him come back to his roots and continue to design with the aspiration to create something that will represent not only himself or Davao, but also the whole of Mindanao. 
He has already proven himself both on national and international level. That's really impressive, Amy. Um, so how are you doing right there in Philippines? Uh, thank you, Farhana, for having us here today. Um, it's my pleasure and honor as well to be part of this panel. Um, yeah, we're reading to a lot of challenges right now. Um, the recent typhoon uh, really hit us hard, but I, I very well know that my countrymen are, are really coping a lot well with that. And we hope that, you know, with God's grace, we'll be able to survive this uh, challenge, apart, of course, from the pandemic that's uh, continuously of course. haunting everyone. <laughs> Yes, um, I mean, it's the same here in Brunei as well. We're just trying to power through. Um, and uh, even though um, I think every single uh, country right now is is still suffering, um, doesn't really matter if it's the pandemic mm -hmm. or even um, the disastrous weather that we're experiencing right now. Um, but, you know, um, life goes on, right? True. And as long as we have each other. Definitely. Exactly, definitely. We'll definitely. get to get through. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you, Emmy. Um, I will be moving on to um, uh, Sarawak, Malaysia. Uh, Dr. Sharifa here um, owns Anna Sukatur. She has been in business for 12 years and is well known in the local market for her original idea, reinterpreting the world of handmade jewelries. Bringing the same intimate inside of jewelries designed into another category of fashion, Anna Su has embarked into designing garments. With all the experience and achievements throughout her journey in fashion industry, it has also taught her a lot with that, with that she has bigger, goal, bigger goals and dreams to expand her brand internationally. Um, she has actually made uh, Sarok very, very proud. And I'm very pleased to meet her today, uh, Dr. Anna. Um, thank you for, be for being here. Um, I'm actually quite a big fan of all of you. Um, and I've I've basically seen your work uh, not only from uh, for this uh, for this year's event, but also from previous event in, uh, from Budayao and also from Tunin Fashion Week. Welcome, Dr. Anna. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very honored to be here and meeting all our fellow designers from uh, Philippines, Brunei, and also Indonesia. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you so much. Oh, likewise, Dr. Anna. Okay, um, so without further ado, um, today's topic is on the impact of COVID-19 in the fashion industry. Um, I mean, this, uh, this issue has, uh, has always, it, has, uh, it actually has hit us for the past two years. Um, it has been two years since COVID-19 has made its existence into the world. And I think, well, not that I think, I'm, I definitely know right now that it is sure to stay. Um, Fazil, uh, how has COVID-19 affected your fashion business so far, especially you being in Dubai right now? To be honest, the first couple of months, especially starting of March. I'm sorry, Fadzil, I think you're, you're, just um, a little bit stuck right now. <laughs> Fazel? Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. So okay. we just the, we lost the, you the, a bit there. Just, yeah, I know. It's a, a bit of a pause here. So I'm not sure whether you heard me or not earlier. Um, but it's the people like us in the community that get us all together and uh, we work together and uh, it comes with. Um, uh, when we used to showcase in fashion shows and all that, we came up with the visual uh, fashion shows and uh, the collaborations that we work, which is even more than how we experienced the, the, the year before that. Mm -hmm. Manzel, are you still there? Are you still with us? Hi, Fadzel. I can see you yes, moving hi. right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to, to like, because it was a dead silence. So yeah, so where were we again? Uh, sorry, so I was just asking you about um, how has COVID-19 impact your fashion business so far? And I think we just um, stopped at that just now. 
Okay, Sorry. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it was affecting me quite quite bad. I think like everybody else. Um, we had a lockdown here in Dubai for the first couple of months from April to about July. Um, all the fashion events that we were supposed to get together with the other ASEAN fellow designers and uh, the events around here as well, all got um, affected. But um, we find a way, the creative people always find a way to get together. Even though we can't see um, like physically with the fashion show and all that, um, but we have I have more uh, visual fashion show uh, more than ever in the last two years, spending all like from in Europe to across Asia as well. So that's um, that's a milestone for the fashion industry. We move forward in a, in a different way than how we used to, you know. Like, um, but that doesn't mean that it kills off your creativity. But um, we we grow even stronger. Probably it hit hard with sales and um, to, to get people to, to get the, 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 the whole physical life, like to go to the shops and all that. But we find a way on how to get the, um, the merchandise across with um, the e-platforms that which is really um, growing for the last couple Definitely. of months. Definitely. I mean, at the end of the day, technology is really important for, um, for our fashion business because I mean, technology is moving so we have to move as well. And then I think exactly. this, um, yeah, this pandemic, it actually teaches us how to do that. We have to be advanced as well. Um, yeah. I mean, being creatives, we are, I think it's the idea of being, um, we need to, as I said, we need to be advanced um, in terms of growing, in, in our growth. It doesn't mean that we're, we're just creatives, but we need to be creatively doing our business, right? Exactly, yeah. So if you look at the other way, before maybe as a fashion designer, you look at cutting patterns, how to make clothes, dresses and all that. But we need to think ahead about styling now, how to do videos, how to produce videos, um, collaborations with photographers, fashion stylists, and how to get it across the internet. It's like what we're doing today, for instance. Exactly. You know, that's, uh, something I new. Mean, yeah. yeah, exactly. Regardless um, on... Uh, the technology, like, you know, we just experienced a little bit of a hiccup just now. We're still powering through. We're, we're still trying to do this to make um, fashion, you know, a better place in the world, you know. Um, so um, at the end of the day, uh, we, uh, yes, just like just what you said just now, we have each other. Yeah. And we go stronger. And move exactly. Um, so, Fadzil, I'd like to understand, because you are currently in Dubai now, and I believe that you do have um, customers in Brunei as well, and maybe just not in Brunei, but everywhere else, did you have to offer any uh, virtual services, such as maybe um, an online fitting and all that? Fadzil, we, I think we lost you again. Fahina, sorry, I, I missed out the last question. Oh, right, sorry. Um, so I was saying, um, because you do have, um, because you're currently based in Brunei, uh, sorry, based in Dubai, right. um, and uh, you do have customers not only in Brunei, but everywhere else, did you have to offer any, uh, any virtual services, such as maybe an online fitting or um, an online consultation? Uh, we've been approached by a company in Malaysia, uh, fortunately. Um, the, we are working on something on that, actually. Um, like, I, I have no idea yet, but I'm trying to learn about how to actually measure somebody within a 3D form. It's something very new to me, um, but uh, we were working on it. We're gonna, we work together. We've been talking to each other. Hmm, Fadzil. Hi, Fadzil. Are you still there with us? <laughs> did you get me? That I think you pro probably missed the last part, did you? Um, so we, I think we left us off on 3D, a 3D program. Yeah, um, apparently we can get um, the measurements of the customers or, or the clients using 3D methods, using just photographs. 
Well, I don't have more information about that yet, but uh, once I find out we're working together with this company and I uh, probably can share more. Uh, it's actually a company based in Malaysia. So we'll see how it works in the next couple of months. It's something new to be honest. That's amazing. And I think that would actually fit so much in my next um, dialogue, which is going to be happening on the 15th of January. But um, yeah, hold that thought. Um, share with us when you when you do, uh, when you do, when we Thank get you. the time to see each other again. Thank you so much Oba, uh, on that, Fazil. Thank uh, you, Anna. Thank you. Um, so my next question is for Amy from the Philippines. How has COVID-19 changed the way you do business? Oh, yeah, um, it, it really did uh, change um, a lot. And I think mm -hmm. there was, you know, so much um, adjustments from, from, from the designers who were definitely used to doing things. Um, uh, uh, I, I mean, we're used to doing things um, like how it was really in the past. But with the pandemic now, uh, we're really quite challenged to, to look into a different perspective in terms of doing things, in terms of... Uh, um, doing business and of course uh, thinking through not only um, at, at this point in time but very importantly also to to, to look through the future I mean uh, uh, the, the, the the covid 19 pandemic is just but circumstantial and uh, we we know truly that there's still you know other challenges coming along so we oh, need definitely. to future proof yeah so one of the things there is to future proof our businesses and to be prepared for for yet another challenge like um, COVID nineteen pandemic that's going to come along. So, um, in a way, I should say um, I don't know if I'm right in saying that uh, maybe there's also something to be thankful about this situation right now because the pandemic is somehow a blessing in disguise. We oh, I believe that to, too. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. we pulled up ourselves together and um, as what. Um, uh, uh, how do you call this? Um, Fazil have mentioned um, a while ago, we're even a lot stronger this time around. Because, you know, um, uh, if I may also cite what happened here with us, um, because of the pandemic, uh, we're able to come together, um, the, the designers individually and as a group. Uh, we have this collective um, 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 organization now, we call it Philippine Fashion Coalition, that, mm -hmm. you know, um, gathers all designers um, uh, from all over the country into one big coalition because we all realize that you know if we are all together we make our voices even louder and uh, you know oh, yeah. uh, there, there's really there's really strength and force no um, if you know if we all come together so uh, uh, we've also realized that uh, uh, maybe in the past uh, when everything was really um, in in a bigger scale of uh, of, of the national level uh, during the pandemic we also realized that you know. Um, the, the, the local um, is also um, the, the way to go. Um, I, I should say that maybe one of the trends, the biggest trends in the in twenty twenty was hyper localization. And um, oh yeah, sorry. And I think that's happening here in Brunei as well. Um, the yeah, uh, you know, supporting localization. That's right. Truly, and uh, the buy local culture, uh, which really focus on local culture, heritage, and identity. Um, honored and recognized our artisanal and emerging crafting communities. And uh, th that said, uh, like for example, the Dabao Fashion Design Council, uh, just before uh, the, the pandemic um, hit us, uh, we got recognition from the city government of Davao with a city ordinance supporting our programs, projects, and activities. And um, also um, the, the Davao Fashion Design Council was able to end a, a very uh, significant um, partnership with the academe, in particular, this, the Philippine Women's College of Davao, the only um, college in Mindanao offering um, a, a bachelor's degree in fashion design. And uh, we're able to, you know, uh, link it through the Center for Innovation and Social Ventures with this collaboration with the Department of Trade and Industry to jumpstart a design-focused shared service facility, which we now call Stitch. It was um, inaugurated um, at the height of the pandemic last year. STITCH stands for simulation, for uh, training um, of industry-bound and technology transitioning creative hubs. And uh, with that, uh, we're able really to at least um, in a way see now that you know, the potential of the industry um, is really there and uh, 
we definitely have all the reason in the world to continue with, I mean, to continue doing with what we have been doing, but also to look into more opportunities and, and potential and how we can possibly expand the industry. And uh, I think what's also very important during this time was also able to, to, to look into certain policies, which um, I think for the longest time uh, wasn't really the, the key priority of many designers in the country, but because of um, the Philippine Fashion Coalition, everybody was practically involved in, um, in reviewing and also at the same time reimagining um, different policies that uh, were already uh, um, that they're already here no, for, for quite some time. So one of the which is um, Republic Act 1942, or the Philippine Tropical Fabrics Law. Uh, we're mm -hmm. able to look through that. And uh, we hope that in the coming months, uh, we'll be able to, to dissect more uh, this policy and see how we can practically contextualize it with the current situation that we are in right now. And um, well, I guess with, with, this, uh, with the situation that we also have right now, um, everybody is just but really inspired and encouraged to, to see for ourselves how else we can probably um, contribute, uh, maybe modestly, but as you see, if we all put all of these efforts together, definitely it will create um, a, a big impact. And um, among other things, uh, we need to see how, uh, for example, um, you know, our, our, our attitude and our um, practices can probably help with the environment because I think that's really one of the, the many key issues right now. Um, we, we need to see how we can probably uh, contribute to efforts in reducing environmental footprints, like, you know, uh, be conscious about seed to assembly um, manner of production, and um, also um, helping, of course, um, uh, and supporting our livelihood or the livelihood of our local communities, which is really very important, and um, also encouraging people to do eco-friendly uh, purchases, you know, things like that. And, yeah. uh, uh, and I think also um, th there was really uh, a, a, a clamor for, for wearing traditional weaves this time that are mm -hmm. handcrafted from local textiles. So that's really exciting. And um, also, um, I, I think there's also, um, a, an, a, a, how do you call this, a, an, an emerging interest on cutting edge technology and textiles. And this is looking into clothing uh, from some of the most sustainable materials and futuristic upcycling of fabrics that uh, uh, we hope can ditch, you know, cheap synthetics from chemicals and polymers like spandex, nada, and polyester, because um, many of our line agencies, like for example, the OST, Philippine Textile Research Institute, um, have re has really been very much engaged and involved with regional centers. Uh, we call them regional yarn uh, production innovation centers. And we hope that this wow. will spur um, a, a, a new, um, uh, growth and development in terms of how we look at fashion and its industry in the coming years. That's, wow, that's really, really amazing. I mean, like, I'm actually really blown right now um, with all of the information that you just mentioned to me. Um, I was going to ask you about uh, sustainability, but you've already uh, covered that. So that's really, really good. Um, I would love, you know, when the pandemic's over, I would love to come over and just you know, um, check out uh, what what uh, Davao and Mindanao has um, has got to offer. Uh, yeah, sure, for definitely, um, and it's also exciting because BIMP Iyaga, uh, well, technically speaking, uh, we're all coming from the fringes of our countries. We're we're, we're off center, right? But mm -hmm. um, you know, these fringes are, are really giving um, a lot of excitement in terms of um, uh, new developments and also new potential. Uh, in terms of the industry and um, also how the industry can contribute in the bigger economy of scale of our um, creative industry. So um, I, I guess with, with Bim Iyaga here um, very soon, um, you know, uh, coming together, collaborating with each other would definitely help us um, oh. go through the situation that we're having right now. And I oh, think that's I've, really very important. <laughs> yes, yes. I've actually got um, some ideas running through my head right now and I'd love I'd love that all of the BIM Yanga designers to come together and uh, to collaborate one day and I love the fact that you have mentioned that um, weave right now is um, is also a hype uh, not only I, I don't I don't believe it's only happening in the Philippines right now but I believe it's happening everywhere else um, and when I say weave it's basically the idea of having sustainable fashion it's the story that we are 
that we are um, designing together with the garment itself. It's um, that's how we're actually uh, trying to, you know, educate the Gen Zs, for example. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and I and I, I I'm hoping that there is um, there's going to be a market for that in the future, and I think it's starting to build up as well. It definitely the, the has. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Emmy. I will be moving on now to the another Emmy. Um, Emmy from Indonesia. So, um, Emmy, uh, what was the most challenging part of the business you had to handle during this very, very difficult time? The most challenging part. Okay. Thank you, Farhana. You're welcome. Uh, uh, before I answer this question, I'd like to apologize in advance if there is any wrong pronunciation because I rarely use English in my daily life. It's okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No <laughs> worries. I hope you're understanding. Of course, of course. Okay. Uh, uh, um, currently, I think our brand have two challenges part to handle during this difficult time. There is uh, the first one is creativity. Uh, during the pandemic, uh, people's lifestyle have changes. People who work have to be work from home. This condition causes uh, cause the sales of fashion products decrease drastically because people do not interact directly face to face. And what people need for fashion, for fashion product shift to healthcare. This is a new challenge uh, for a fashion designer to create a creation that are suitable for pandemic uh, condition. Uh, for example, before the pandemic, our brand made a collection of uh, contemporary ethnic ready-to-wear that mm -hmm. are suitable for work or an event. You know, the pandemic has forced us all to stay at home and all events have been postponed. Because of this, it is very, very difficult for us to sell the products in the pandemic period. In order to keep our brand running well, we create something different than usual, uh, such as a launchwear or a simple tops that can be worn uh, for work from home. We are required to be more creative and constantly pay attention to the pandemic situation so that we know what product we must create to be able suitable in the market. Until now, we continue to look for opportunities what consumer need and build creativity to increase sales during this pandemic. And I think creativity aspect is a very, very important thing that should be applied to all of every kinds of business without exception in building a business. Uh, then second, a second challenge part is marketing. Mm -hmm. Marketing is also of the big challenges Parts during this pandemic. Once again, I give an example of our fashion brand. Before pandemic, we did offline marketing more widely than online marketing. The pandemic caused all creative business, including the fashion industry, especially offline business, stop running. This condition pushed us to take another marketing opportunity that is an online marketing. We start our brand start to build a store in a local marketplace. We use our social media as a marketing media to hold a live sales and linking our marketplace store to social media. So it's more easier for our social media follower and consumer to access our products for window shopping. In the future, we will uh, expand our marketing online more broadly. In my opinion, those are the most challenging part during the pandemic that we are still running until now to keep our fashion business sustainable. Okay, thank yes. you, Anna. Oh, yes, thank you, Emmy. Um, I agree with that. Uh, actually, um, I think uh, one, one thing that Fazil also has mentioned earlier on, um, it has uh, definitely, um, the pandemic has actually pushed us uh, to, do, to do things creatively. Um, uh, Emmy has uh, Emmy from Philippines has also said the same thing that um, whatever it is, we still need to be able to um, divert 
our the way we do fish uh, our business right now into something more sustainable. Um, and I think uh, both Emmys are doing the same thing um, in terms of sustainability. Um, and we, we, the world needs to have that shift right now. Um, even in terms of marketing, uh, we yes, we are selling everything, uh, most of our things on social media. We have, not only we have Instagram, but we have TikTok right now. I don't know how to do TikTok. Yes. <laughs> it's something that's really, really challenging for me. Me too. Uh, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a Gen Z, but, <laughs> but um, a millennial that does, uh, that can do uh, social media is enough. And you're right, um, having the marketplace is actually quite important as well, not only to reach um, your local um, your local market, but also to have it um, uh, internationally, um, especially within the Southeast Asian region. Or better yet today, um, since we're uh, from Bim Iaga, um, Bim Ia, within the Bim Iaga region, right? Mm -hmm. um, thank you so much for that, Ami. Uh, uh, I mean, that is, that's actually perfect English right there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, um, our, our question, the next question goes to uh, Dr. Anna. So Dr. Anna, okay, give me a second. Let me just put this up. Um, uh, during this uncertain period, um, what have you learned so far that can be used to improve your fashion business? Oh, hi. Okay, um, so I agree with all our uh, other designers um, that sustainability and also adapting to the new norm is another way of moving forward. And uh, this is one thing that I learned is that um, we cannot just create another collection, uh, just another collection, but we have to create something which is sustainable, wearable and durable during this time because uh, the customer's priority has changed. Um, and the purchasing behavior is also changed. Uh, so we, we, since that there are events are limited, so people are not really looking for something that they are elaborate. So um, we have to produce something, you know, that cater to their needs, which is more simple, wearable, and also uh, affordable. And um, what happened in Malaysia right now is that uh, we are being hit by the massive uh, flood disaster in central Malaysia, uh, especially in Kuala Lumpur and also Selangor. Uh, to date, um, there are about 40 uh, casualties so far uh, this mm -hmm. week. Yeah, so this is another challenge, challenge that we see um, hitting our economic uh, sectors, especially the retail industry. So we... Um, as if pandemic is not enough. So we are now having another things, yeah. And from here, we have to re uh, re look at our pricing strategy as well. If we were to sell, um, you know, merchandise, we have to revise the pricing. Um, at the same time, the material is, um, you know, the cost of material materials is increasing. Logistic is another problem now. So um, we have to revise the price so that people can afford to buy our merchandise. And, um, and we can see that uh, customer spending is now being dropped um, drastically. And uh, we see a lot of shops are being closed. Um, so this is another thing that we have to really, you know, uh, think about when we want to strategize our, our next move. And um, looking to, uh, but then again, uh, at the end of the day, we are not just um, a designer who design, but we also try to make our uh, income out of, out of this. This is our business, right? Um, yes. Yeah, and I think uh, how I look at it was um, we have to also produce uh, merchandise that is considered as essential um, because this is the demand that we have right now. Uh, for example, like the face mask, uh, during our first MCO before, um, I don't have that confidence to produce because I thought that, uh, you know, fabric face mask is not so, uh, you know, uh, in terms of healthy uh, health, uh, is probably not so healthy. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, but then again, but when our government um, uh, promoting double mask. I think this is the right time for me to introduce um, fabric face mask. Um, actually, the demand is very good. 
and I produce box uh, production for uh, government agencies and um, association. Um, so I guess this is another uh, things that we can look at, you know, uh, creating merchandise that people really need at the moment. That's, uh, that's actually really true. Um, I think Emmy has also mentioned just now that right now we actually have to make sure that uh, we adapt to the current situation um, where uh, we, we have to create loungewear, something that is very um, not, not basically our brand aesthetic because we want to try yes. to make sure that we sell everything luxurious, everything that is made for, um, I don't know, Cardi B to wear. You know, something very wow, yes, very yes. diva. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, right now, because our clients are staying at home, uh, we have to also adapt to that so that we can uh, sustain in the business, right? Or else how are we going to be, you know, how, how can we stay in this business? Um, yeah, I mean, for myself as well, it's quite challenging. I haven't really done any masks yet, to be honest. Um uh, a lot of other designers are doing masks right now. So it's not, it's something that I'm still thinking to do. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, I think we, we, we need to move forward to do just, just that. Uh, it is quite challenging to do, uh, to create and design uh, masks because you're right. It's not, um, it's not something that you want to cover your whole face the whole yeah, time, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's um, why I have the dark in the first place. Yes, yes. I mean, I'm still having it. So, I mean, well done to you, Dr. Anna, for even um, producing it correctly right now <laughs> and mm -hmm. that your clients <laughs> you, are, are, loving, are loving it. Yeah. Wow. Um, okay. So, um, I have two questions for every single designer now before we end our session, um, our dialogue for today. Um, I mean, what I'm actually hearing from today is uh, a lot, there is a lot of adaption that we have to, to, to go through um, in terms of sustaining our business. And it's just uh, not, only, um, not only we need to go forward with technology, but we have to change the way we we, uh, we do our business. Um, our products and services are very, very different now. Um, loungewear and then streetwear is, is like, um, you know, it's especially, uh, it's just, it's, it's on demand right now. So uh, to make it look as luxurious as, as, as how we want it to be, um, we still can do that. We'll still have our, our, our touch in it. Um, however, uh, it's, it's something that we, we have to adapt, yeah? Um, but nonetheless, um, collaboration and um, being together here today is something that is uh, I'm, I'm very, very grateful for. Although we can't see each other in real life, we're still seeing each other here through technology, although it has failed me for a good um, 20 minutes just now. <laughs> so, um, okay, last not, but not least, um, so COVID-19 is not over. And then we've heard about our, um, uh, Sorry to, to hear from uh, Dr. Anna um, on what, what, what's uh, Malaysia going through right now, especially uh, around Kuala Lumpur. That's really, really, it really uh, breaks your heart to, to hear all of, all of this happening. Um, and, and I believe that Philippines, uh, you just had a very bad um, weather. I think you had, uh, you were hit by the typhoon as well, right? Yeah. Oh, that's really, really difficult and very heartbreaking. Um, so the pandemic is not over yet. Um, instead, it has been reported that um, different variants will be mutating. And it ha we have another one called Omic uh, Omicron, right? right. Um, and it's going around Southeast Asia, not only Southeast Asia, but as well as Europe. Um, but we are not giving up and, and we're going to be living with it. Um, could you please uh, give me two words of motivation that has kept you going through throughout all of this uh, craziness right now? Uh, maybe you can start off with Dr. Anna. Okay, I think uh, whatever happens, I think we uh, have to keep on dreaming and that we have as a designer because it's the thing that keeps us moving. As a designer, we uh, we live with you know and fantasy so that we can create. So I think you know we keep on living in in our creation. So we just move forward, no matter what. 
Sorry, Dr. Anna, um, you, you are breaking up. Can you hear me? Um, you're breaking up a little bit. Okay. So we'll just wait for Dr. Anna for a bit. Hi. Hi, Doctor. Yes, you're, you're here with us. Did you hear what I said just now? Just a little uh, bit. Need <laughs> me to repeat? If you can, Wait. please. Sorry? Yes, if you can. If you can repeat just okay. one more time. All right. Uh, I was saying that uh, we have to keep on believing in ourselves, uh, trust our dreams and fantasy, because as a designer, that is what we are holding on. When we have that fantasy and when we have that dream, that is what makes us design. So uh, don't lose this, you know. Uh, have faith in ourselves, have faith in our creation, and just move forward. Adopt and adapt. That's it. Wow, that's that's really amazing. Um, I love the idea when you said adopt and adapt because, um, I mean, it's really hard to do so, but if you tell your words, tell yourself that, adopt and adapt, inshallah, or, you know, um, hopefully we'll, we'll go through it. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Anna. Um, can we move on to Emmy from Philippines? Yeah. Um, well, for me, I think two words would be agility and coexistence. Um, it's very important for us designers to, to really look through forward, not only um, at this point, but also to see um, things in a bigger perspective of sorts. Um, it's very important, as what I mentioned um, earlier, that we need to future proof. Uh, for Hannah here mentioned, um, COVID is here to stay. Variants keep on mutating, and we really have to live with that. And um, yeah, truly, we, we, we need to be proactive you know, in a sense and see how we can probably um, make ourselves ready, um, not just for this situation that we are having right now, but also for, uh, for situations that will definitely be coming along. And um, it's also very important that um, we all, um, again, uh, 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 see how we can coexist with each other. And uh, this pandemic taught us really a lot about you know, um, appreciating not only our similarities, but also our differences in, in that way. Um, we're able to, to, to see how um, you know, the, the, the kind of uniqueness um, will, will, definitely, will definitely keep us and pull us back together. And um, um, I, I guess that uh, it, it's very important that we're able to see also the force of fashion and how fashion can, can can definitely impact to the world. As what Bill Cunningham said, uh, fashion is the armor to survive the everyday life. And we hope wow. that we designers here will definitely use that power uh, to, to impact the world. Wow, that, that's a really, really good quote. <laughs> I love that. Thank you so much, Amy. Um, can we move on to uh, Miss Amy Thee? Two words. Mm -hmm. Uh, for me, to what to motivate us is uh, the first one is uh, consumer, and the second is the earth. Why is the consumer? Because uh, because they support because support from our consumer that keep us survive. They stay loyal to buy our product during the pandemic. This motivates us to keep working, more creative, and survive. And the second word is the earth. Uh, our brand claims to be a brand that puts the concept of sustainable fashion as a foundation in creating products that are in harmony with the earth. Now we're still learning and learning. I see it as a responsibility uh, as a human being who lives on this earth to keep camp campaign the sustainable life through our creation with the hope that what we campaign can become a new lifestyle in the future, keep us never stop creating. I think that is Parana. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ms. Emmy. Um, that's really beautiful. Um, we'll move on to last but not least, uh, Fadzil. 
All right. Um, I hope I don't get uh, disconnected again. Um, just two <laughs> words from me to all of you. <laughs> Live to the fullest and focus on the positive. I think we've been through a lot already the last uh, few years. Um, I think we just need to move forward. And just the two words that I often use is race above. So we can all move forward and upgrade the things ahead. Definitely. I mean, the worst, um, well, the worst is not over. Uh, at the end of the day, for me, it's always um, anything bad that comes, uh, that, that happens to us, it, it will pass. And we'll, I mean, we're still here, right? At the end of the day, uh, we'll, we're still working towards our passion. And I think uh, for us to have this passion, that, that, that's basically what keeps us, keeps us going, you know? Um, and then uh, one thing I think that's very good, uh, especially for those who are always suffering from anxiety or, you know, um, from, a, uh, yeah, from an anxiety point of view, um, I think that would be a little bit on me. So, um, you know, when thoughts take over, just overtake them, you know, um, just be positive. Like, uh, like you, all, you all said, just mentioned just now. Um, okay. Uh, so we have come to our, uh, the end of our session. My God, that was, that was really, really good. That's a really, really good session. But, you know, uh, the first, the first few minutes was a total, not, not a disaster, but that's this kind of technology challenge that I... Yes, that is just a that challenge. Gives me, yes, that gives me anxiety right there. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so um, I had fun. Did you guys have fun too? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, we did. And very insightful yes. conversation. Thank yeah. you for having us here today. <laughs> uh, I mean, at the end of the day, um, I think this... Every single time I, I come, um, I go to a fashion event or a fashion anything... Um, and I meet um, amazing, uh, amazing designers um, who who actually has their own uh, way, and um, they they actually walk uh, their own their own life. They have their own challenges and everything. It actually really inspires me so much to do better. So it also inspires me to understand fashion and its art even better. So I'm actually very impressed with um, whatever you have just uh, talked about today. And uh, I surely did have fun. Uh, so thank you. Um, but before that, I would like to say, um, we, uh, to, especially to our viewers, we are truly uh, grateful for the support of this community um, in bringing contemporary fashion and culture to where it is today. Um, uh, we look forward to continuing this journey um, of change to make a difference with all of you in the fashion community. Um, I would like to also um, inform everyone to join us at our second event on the 15th of January with the topic fashion and technology, how the two are important to shape the, fas uh, the future of fashion business. It basically inter interrelates uh, with our topic for today. Um, till then, um, before we sign off, uh, Let's take a, a quick photo after this. But to our view, viewers, till then, take care. Stay, stay, stay safe. Have a good holiday. Wishing everyone a very, very happy new year. Um, I think everybody's um, busy Christmas shopping, aren't they? So uh, without further ado, thank you so much, everyone. Um, thank you, designers, for being here with me. Um, I would uh, 